Almost every April since 1972, the Hash Bash has been held on the Diag of the University of Michigan campus, a free speech event and smoke-in to promote the legalization of marijuana. The first Hash Bash took advantage of an unexpected moment when a Michigan Supreme Court ruling declared the law prohibiting marijuana unconstitutional, and supporters of activist John Sinclair, who was serving 10 years for two joints, celebrated while it was legal. 50 years later, a new kind of event drew approximately 1,500 people to campus, one that celebrated a sacred plant medicine with vision-producing properties, formerly known as entheogenic plants and fungi, but more colloquially known as magic mushrooms and psychedelics, and Arbor's first entheofest, also a commemoration of the city's 2020 resolution to decriminalize entheogenic plants and fungi, was not an opportunity to experiment with psychedelics publicly, as its name might suggest. It featured three and a half hours of speeches from elected officials, community leaders, activists, artists, therapists, healers, musicians, martial artists, and a tent full of researchers who talked much more about history, health, and research than they did about trips. Maintaining our personal relationship with entheogenic plants fungi is a human right, Julie Barron, co-director of Decriminalize Nature Michigan, told the PBS NewsHour. Humans have had these relationships for millennia, Current research is now catching up. Decriminalize Nature Michigan supporters listen to keynote speaker Barking Dog Daryl Brown at Ann Arbor, Michigan's first EntheoFest, a free speech event to celebrate entheogenic plants and fungi. On the diagram of the University of Michigan campus on September 19, 2021. Photographer Julie Barron. Much like the wave of marijuana decriminalization that has swept the country in recent years, a growing number of cities and states are considering similar resolutions involving psychedelic substances. In this way, the event was not only an opportunity for people to share how antheogenic plants and fungi have helped them, but also to advocate for decriminalization and legalization, organizers said. While antheogenic plants and fungi remain illegal at the federal level, some state and local governments have been decriminalizing them in various forms in the last several years. This means that they are still illegal, but they are often ranked the lowest of police and prosecutor priorities. In November 2020, Oregon voters passed ballot measure 110, which made personal non-commercial possession of a controlled substance no more than a classy violation. In 2021, Rhode Island passed a bill that authorized a pilot program to create harm reduction centers where people may safely consume controlled substances under the supervision of health care professionals. New Jersey passed a bill earlier this year to decriminalize possession of under one ounce of psilocybin mushrooms. And several local governments, including Ann Arbor, have decriminalized the use of entheogenic plants and fungi including the cities of Oakland, Santa Cruz, and Arcadia in California, Northampton, Somerville, and Cambridge in Massachusetts, and Denver, Seattle, and Washington, D.C. A similar bill was introduced to the Michigan legislature this fall. On Election Day, the Citizens' Initiative in Detroit will be on the ballot. Known as Proposally, it would decriminalize the use of entheogenic plants and fungi, including ayahuasca from South America, ibogaine from Africa, peyote and mescaline from certain cacti, and psilocybin from certain mushrooms with vision-producing capabilities. Opposition to such measures tends to cite fears that loosening penalties will lead to increased drug use and crime among the public. But recent studies suggest that ibogaine can reduce opioid withdrawal symptoms, psilocybin can relieve major depression, psilocybin can decrease depression and anxiety in patients with life-threatening cancer. MDMA combined with psychological counseling, other research shows, can give marked relief to patients with post-traumatic stress disorder. The FDA has given psilocybin the designation of breakthrough therapy which can accelerate the process of drug development and review. Esketamine has been approved by the FDA for treatment-resistant depression. While many voters across the country are skeptical about these substances' medicinal applications, a Hill-Harris X poll released June 1 found that 35% of registered voters polled think that psychedelic substances such as magic mushrooms do have medical uses. That percentage goes up among younger voters aged 18 to 34 and 35 to 49. Since Ann Arbor passed its ordinance on entheogenic plants and fungi, nine other Michigan cities have initiated decriminalization campaigns, Barron said. At the EntheoFest, 
Several speakers shared how entheogenic plants and fungi helped them when other pharmaceutical drugs would not. Entheofest 2021 keynote speaker Barking Dog Daryl Brown talks about the spiritual traditions of using entheogenic plants and fungi in Native American cultures on September 19, 2021 in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Photograph courtesy of Decriminalize Nature Detroit. Keynote speaker Barking Dog Daryl Brown talked about the spiritual traditions of using entheogenic plants and fungi in Native American cultures. Iana I of KI Network spoke about how 22 years of taking plant medicine has helped her as a senior citizen deal with the stresses and fears involved with getting older and losing a loved one, and how she especially wanted to make it available to more senior citizens. Sean Vicious of Decriminalized Nature Hazel Park in Madison Heights spoke about how integrating plant medicine, Microdoses of psilocybin administered through a Johns Hopkins study, with traditional therapy helped her overcome major prescription-resistant postpartum depression. Kat Ebert, a board member of Students for Sensible Drug Policy, said that after struggling with depression, anxiety, PTSD, and substance abuse issues, working with psychedelics helped her begin healing from abuse by former U.S. gymnastics teen Dr. Larry Nasser when she was a teen. Plant medicine saved my life said Barry Richardson, a veteran of the U.S. Coast Guard with trauma and PTSD from his military service. I no longer needed pharmaceuticals. I no longer wanted to die. I wanted to live. Sometimes the question of decriminalization is taken on by a city council or state legislatures. In Detroit, that question is posed to voters. Proposally regarding entheogenic plants asks if Detroit voters should amend the city code to decriminalize to the fullest extent permitted under Michigan law the personal possession and therapeutic use of entheogenic plants by adults and make the personal possession and therapeutic use of entheogenic plants by adults the city's lowest law enforcement priority. Thank you for watching. Please, subscribe.